Okay, welcome to our camera shake tutorial. Uh, now, I know this is a topic that has been covered uh, a couple times before, uh, but the reason I am covering this again is um, this is my own uh, version of this. It is a little bit different than a lot of tutorials that I've seen. Uh, and it's also my first video tutorial, so I wanted to tackle something fairly simple and uh, not uh, rock the boat too much and uh, just uh, start Start simple and I'll work my way up and hopefully we'll have some more of these. So anyway, what we're going to do today is create a camera shake in After Effects. Um, and we're going to be working with a piece of text and a simple background that looks like this. We play it through. Um, the text is flying in, hitting the background, and it doesn't look very exciting. Um, and what we're going to do is sort of enhance the feel of this text flying in hitting in the background and uh, cause a sort of uh, earthquake tremble of uh, motion um, in this text animation. So we're going to accomplish this using a uh, motion tile and we're going to use a couple of expressions to make this happen. Now what is motion tile? Motion tile is um, a fairly underrated plugin simply for the fact that um, it is perfect for this kind of uh, application where we want to create motion in a piece of media. Um, so I'm going to play this simple uh, example of motion tile. I have it applied to a picture here. And uh, essentially what motion tile does is uh, it's almost like a transform uh, function where we can move an image around. Um, but what motion tile also allows us to do is actually when we reach the edge of the picture, we can tell it to mirror the edges rather than just repeat it and tile it. The other thing that is good about motion tile is that if we have motion blur enabled for our composition and our layer, and we make this motion fairly quick, um, we start to see motion blur resulting in the picture. So you might be starting to get the, the, the idea of where we're going with this. Um, so in this example, I am working with two layers. And what I want to do is have motion tile apply to both of these. Um, and the best way to do this is to use an adjustment layer. Now, if you haven't used adjustment layers too much, an adjustment layer is something that applies any effect to it to the layers below. So to this layer, if I apply the motion tile effect by going under uh, stylize, motion tile and I change this tile center I move it over to this section right here now we see our edges uh, starting to repeat I can set this to mirror so that it is mirroring our edges and you notice that it is moving both our background layer and our text layer if I move this below the text layer it's not going to affect the text layer if I move it above it moves the text layer so what we're going to do is use this motion tile with our motion blur turned on and move this motion tile, this tile center, around a little bit. Now we can do this manually, but what I suggest to do is use an expression for this. Um, now some people are, are slightly intimidated by expressions, um, but there's no need to be. There's a number of ways to make expressions work for you with very little scripting knowledge or JavaScript knowledge. Um, so what we're going to do today is use a very simple command uh, called wiggle. So what I want to do is set our tile center. Um, I want to have it use an expression. And I can do that by hold on, holding down the Option key on my Mac or Alt key in Windows. And I click on the stopwatcher. Uh, as After Effects calls it, the time vary switch. <clears throat> and, and what I'm going to do is type in a little expression that says wiggle. Now, wiggle is going to look for a couple of numbers. Um, we're going to just stick with the bare minimum of numbers here. Um, the first number here it is going to look for is the frequency, or how many times a second it is actually going to wiggle or move around. The second number is uh, the amplitude. The amplitude is the maximum displacement 
that the wiggle function is going to move our values. All a wiggle is really doing is not creating values. It's not a random number generator. It is something that adds variance to our existing values based on the data we supply it, uh, the frequency and the amplitude. And there's other uh, parameters inside wiggle that we can uh, access. Um, but really for today, all we need to do is define both a frequency and a amplitude which we would achieve like this. Now I'm actually going to change this. I want this to be 10 and um, now I could enter a number of 100 and uh, close this off and uh, if we play this we see what's going on. It's wiggling all over the place. It's got um, motion blur on it. It's going to wrap back around to the other side. Um, now it looks like we're sort of stuck in an earthquake. This is kind of cool, but really all we want to do is we want to have this wiggle happen at the moment our text lands right here. You can see my position keyframe right there. And I want it to wiggle for a little bit, but a sort of uh, decay to happen after that. Um, so if we think about how we want this to be graphed out, actually, I have over here a very crude graph, but this kind of demonstrates what I'm thinking sort of like a sawtooth curve where a lot of wiggle would happen at first and it was wiggle around and sort of decay down to zero. The idea being that something knocked the camera around and whoever was holding the camera eventually gained control and uh, uh, we got back to our original point. So, so the way we're going to control this is by using an expression control. Um, now what these do, I've seen a number of my students sort of play around with effects and they pull up this expression controls and they apply something and uh, they play with the values and they see that nothing really happens and they get unexcited by it and they delete it. Um, expression controls on their own have absolutely no visible effect. They are strictly there so we can use them to have numbers that we can use to drive other expressions. That's why these are called expression controls. Um, and we can rename these. If I select this and I hit uh, enter or return, I can call this something like camera shake, uh, which makes a lot more sense than what we had before. Perhaps if I handed this project off to another animator, this makes a lot more sense that this is called camera shake than expression slider, um, or slider control, rather. Um, and what we're going to do is we use this slider to control our wiggle amplitude. Um, so what I'm going to do is to keep this a little more easy to wrap our head around is I'm going to define a variable. I'll just call it shake. And what we're going to do is use this thing right here. This is called the pick whip. And I mentioned that Expressions are fairly easy to use and they don't require a lot of scripting experience uh, to use them. And this is one of the reasons why. If I use this pick whip and drag it to a value that I want to grab, the pick whip um, tells After Effects to enter the code uh, that I would need to use that particular parameter. So in this case, I wanted to define a variable that is equal to the camera shake slider value. And when I define a variable, I always want to put a little semicolon at the end. Now, instead of having this set value of 100, I'm now going to enter this variable. So this variable of shake. Shake is equal to this slider amount. So I enter that. This snaps back to zero because my slider is now set to zero. And if I start playing with the slider, um, enter values for it, um, you'll see it again taking effect. So I'm going to set this back to zero. And I'm going to look at my position keyframes of my type so I can see that. I hit P. And uh, I'm going to hit J to snap myself back to the, uh, the previous keyframe. So it's at this point that I want our camera shake to start. So I'm going to tool this open. I'm going to set a keyframe for our slider. Um, that's where I want it to start. So I'm actually going to back myself up one keyframe, set another keyframe there jump forward, hit the K 
key to uh, advance to the next keyframe. And I'm gonna set this slider value to something like 200. And uh, oh, I'm gonna bring myself forward a little bit. And again, I'm gonna set this value to 100 again. Now, if we twirl this open, look at our graph, we're kind of getting at this original uh, graph that I was hoping to achieve in my camera shake, where it happens abruptly and slowly decays. I'm gonna tweak this graph just a little bit, and I'm gonna cue back to the beginning and play this through. That might be just a little bit too much camera shake. That's actually not too bad. So I'm gonna enhance this a little bit more by adding some motion blur to our text that is flying in. And play this through as this flies in, hits the background, and it causes such a commotion that the whole earth trembles in fear of our type animation. So if that's a little bit too much, we can go back and look at our camera shake. I'm going to hit U to show our keyframes. And I'm going to knock this value down to maybe 150. That, uh, that might make things a little bit more manageable. Bring back to the beginning, hit play. And it's shaking around. I find this uh, a better solution to the age-old camera shake than any other that I've seen, but that's just me. Uh, I like this rather than using the wiggle uh, module because it does leave a lot more flexibility and uh, it allows a user to uh, just sort of adjust things on the fly and not uh, write keyframes and have yourself constantly writing and erasing keyframes to tweak the amount of camera shake that is um, happening in your animation. The one thing that we do not have a controller for is I'm going to hit EE to show my expression is this amount of wiggle per second, the frequency. So if I wanted this to go a little bit faster, I'd have to manually adjust it in the uh, expression. However, if I wanted to do the same thing up here and make an expression slider and call that frequency perhaps, and also tie this to expression slider, we could definitely do that. However, uh, we don't really need to keyframe it, so I just leave it uh, as is and enter a number. So I hope you enjoy my first video tutorial. I am Harry J. Frank. Hopefully you can see a lot more of these at my website, graymachine.com, G-R-A-Y machine.com. Thanks for tuning in.